The lament for the fallen grows louder with each passing day of war. The song is of battles gone by, but resonates again far and wide in every corner of Ukraine, where a new generation is learning the pain of grief and sacrifice. Maria's come here to pay her respects and pray for a relative missing in action. It's the second summer of war and its toll hangs heavy here. Everyone has lost someone. For Oksana, it's her husband she mourns. For five years they were together and the grief is still raw. Pavlo was a fitness champion who volunteered to fight. A Russian airstrike destroyed his convoy last November. Honestly, it's still very hard to accept that he has gone. It's only when I'm here that it sinks in. I feel he's still somewhere. That he's still alive and on a mission, doing his job. At cemeteries all across Ukraine, the military dead just keep coming. Here in Lviv, near the border with Poland, very far from the fighting on the Eastern Front, the fresh graves of soldiers number in their hundreds. There are so many, in fact, at this cemetery that up the hill here, they're clearing the way of the fallen from previous wars to make room for those lost in this conflict. The discarded blood-stained blankets, tourniquets and dressings from lives that couldn't be saved. But at this town mortuary, it's Margot's job to make sure their sacrifice and their names are remembered. Before the war, it was mostly the old who crossed this threshold. Now it's the corpses of Ukraine's young men and women who pass through daily. Their numbers have doubled since the counter-offensive began in June. They leave in single file, a trail of grief without end. Ukraine doesn't release official figures of those killed in action, but it's in the tens of thousands. This is a routine that they repeat here every single day. Many are unrecognisable, so they search for phones, wallets, clues to identify the dead. Each loss is personal, but one arrival was especially so for Margot. The worst day was when they brought my husband here. He died while defending his motherland. It was the hardest day of my life. That moment made me realize that I have to be here. But that was the hardest day ever. This is only one day's worth of losses from one small part of this war's long front. But still, there is no slackening in the will to battle on. In marriage, Oksana made a pact with her husband. She would join up if he was killed in action. She's still getting used to army life and the dangers that come with it. This road is regularly shelled. Uh -huh. 
gear outside Bakhmut, they head out and immediately take cover in nearby woods. This position is in range of Russian guns. Like thousands of other Ukrainians, Oksana had very little time to mourn. Instead, she chose to fight. And what we hear from a lot of soldiers on the front line is that the time to grieve will come when the war is over. She's now part of an aerial reconnaissance team hunting for a Russian anti-tank unit. They have to work fast. The risk is real out here in the open. It won't take long for Russian artillery to find them. Why after your husband's death did you just stay at home? You decided instead to come here to the front line? I didn't have the strength to stay at home anymore. I really wanted to continue his work so that his life would not be in vain. He was working towards his goal to end the war. He wanted peace so that people could continue to live happily in our country. But the hope of peace and victory too is still a far off dream for Oksana. She and Margot will do their part to serve the memory of the fallen and to keep their country free. Ukraine soil bears witness to how much it has already given and to the sacrifice still to come. Чорна ріля і зорана.